So what I'm gonna now do is I'm gonna show you uh, two proofs for this because um, each proof, uh, I like, I love problems which have multiple proofs and each proof kind of highlights the strengths of a couple of different approaches. And uh, I, I want you to just have a think before you look at these two different methods, how would you go about proving this, right? How would you try and reverse this logic, not having any assumptions about the particular shape that you've got and prove that the, the right angle here Use that as your starting point rather than your ending point. It leads to the knowledge. Uh, you can prove that AB has to be a diameter. Have a think about it before you keep watching. All right, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go with this uh, circle. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call this proof one. And we'll call it plane geometry because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have my best effort at uh, quite literally reversing the logic that we employed before. It's not gonna be identical because uh, I'm proving something different, um, but I am gonna use much the same kind of ideas. It will take a slightly bit longer, but, but not a whole lot, okay? All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, look, suppose I should get that right on that line there, that, that's more helpful, okay? Suppose I'm going to not start from a diameter, um, I'm gonna have the center of the circle, and then I've got some angle somewhere that I know is 90 degrees. So it's some angle somewhere on the circle. So suppose we place it, oh, I don't know, somewhere like here. Now, for reasons that are gonna become obvious in a moment, I'm not actually going to, um, I'm gonna create um, something that doesn't look like the diameter because uh, I don't want to rely on the fact that my diagram looks like it must be the case. Um, I want to actually use logic and deduction, right? So you can see what I've got here. It's not actually a 90 degree angle that looks obtuse to me, but what I can do is I can still use the logic that I normally would uh, and not rely on my eyes fooling me. So I'm just going to say, yes, I have at this point P from an A and a B, I've got this right angle. And now what I want to prove is that AB is a diameter. Now, no, it doesn't look like it, especially when I connect it up to the center, as you're gonna see, you're like, that doesn't look like a diameter at all. But again, that's kind of my point. All right, so how can I say um, that uh, AB is a diameter? How can I prove it? Well, like I mentioned before, I'm gonna use some of the same uh, logical deductive moves that I used earlier, but I have to use them running in a different direction, okay? So I'm gonna start with a very similar construction. I'm going to, from the center, I'm going to join up this uh, interval here, OP. And it does the same thing that I had before um, because I've got this center here and I've got one, two, three points that I know are all on the circumference, okay? So what I've got here is these lengths here have to be equal because they're all radii, all right? So, so far so good. Then what I can say is uh, I've got uh, the angles that I had before, which were from those isosceles triangles, right? Even though I don't know what they're equal to, I still know that they're equal to each other. So again, sort of rehearsing this logic, I think I said I had, let's call this alpha and this alpha over here. So again, you can see I'm using triangle A, O, P, it's isosceles there, and I'm gonna do the same, what colors did I use? Purple, right. Um, I'm gonna use the same logic over here, so I've got beta and beta here. So maybe to make it a little more obvious, what I'll do is I'll highlight, this is my isosceles triangle here on the left, and then I also have another one, a corresponding one over here. Okay, so I've got my isosceles triangles and I think you're probably content to know the alphas and the betas that are equal to each other. Now at this point, remember what I'm trying to prove is that AB is a diameter. I don't even know that AB is actually a straight line at this point. Uh, and so what I wanna do is set out to prove that actually a through O through B, that these are collinear, that they're not sort of off at a funny angle like this, because I, I don't know that there's one chord that unites them at this point. All I know is that APB is 90 degrees, okay? So given that I don't know that A, O, B, A and O and B are collinear, um, they, they have separate angles associated with them. So I don't know what those are equal to. So let's call this one theta that goes uh, from the middle over to A, and then let's call this one phi. So again, from the middle over to OB. All right, now, similar kind of logic. What I can say is this bigger shape here, uh, AOBP, this pair of triangles combines to make a 
quadrilateral. So what I can say is in uh, quadrilateral, what did I call it? A, O, B, P, um, I'm going to consider those, uh, those four angles, I guess, that make up the quadrilateral, right? So I start with uh, alpha, which is over here on this left-hand side. Then I've got this angle in here, so it's uh, theta plus phi. Then I've got this uh, beta over on the right-hand side, plus this other uh, pair of adjacent angles that combines to make uh, angle A, P, B. So you can see that's an alpha plus a beta. Now, because this is a quadrilateral, the angle sum is not 180 degrees like I was looking at before, the angle sum is 360 because that's a fairly basic property of quadrilaterals. I mean, it's made up of two triangles, each of which is 180, that's where we prove that from. Okay, so now what I can do is just, just a little bit of rearrangement, right? If I put this uh, theta plus phi over to the left hand side and then if you have a look at what you have remaining, um, there's the two alphas that I made before and there's the two betas in their respective triangles. So they're going to be double alpha plus beta and that's equal to 360. <clears throat> and now I can use the fact that because alpha plus beta being 90 degrees is my starting point, not my ending point, I can bring that in, I can substitute that in for this alpha plus beta that I can see here, right? So this is going to be theta plus phi equal, uh, plus rather, two times 90, so that's 180 degrees equals 360. So my reason for that is that alpha plus beta is equal to 90. And then you can see what I've got here is just alpha, sorry, theta plus phi, doing the subtraction, that's 180 degrees, um, which means that AOB is actually a straight angle because that's what 180 degrees is defined as, right? So AOB is a straight angle line or a straight angle, either of them are equivalent, I think, in this context. Okay, now it's a straight line. Now all I've proven at the moment is that AB is a chord of the circle because uh, it joins two points on the circumference and it's, it's a straight line, right? But I haven't proved it, it's the diameter. What's the special property that the diameter has? Um, and that is the fact that it's the unique chord that is the longest chord you can make, which is two radii end to end. And you can see here, AO and OB, they're both radii, right? So I will say, but um, AB, I can call it one line now or one interval because I just proved that it's straight. AB is equal to uh, AO plus OB, which equals 2R. Therefore, it has to be a diameter because that's the only kind of chord that is that long. All right. Happy times, I am finished. That was proof number one, plain geometry. I used uh, very similar kinds of properties, the angle sums of, um, of some uh, polygons here, in this case a quadrilateral rather than a triangle, though that's built off triangles anyway. I used this fact here, which was my starting point rather than my ending point, and then I can end with the fact that it's a diameter. Great.